Here are four biblical rules to protect your soul from getting hurt in a relationship. Number one, choose your circle wisely. Are you looking for one in a million or a needle in a haystack or that diamond in the rough? Rather than looking for the diamond in the rough, you're gonna have a lot better luck finding a diamond where they process diamonds or sell them. Likewise, if you're looking for a needle, you're going to have a lot easier time finding one if you just ask someone like a seamstress rather than looking through a pile of hay. In other words, where you look directly affects what you find. People spend time with people who are similar to them. Healthy people spend time with healthy people. Unhealthy people spend time with unhealthy people. Mature Christians spend time with other mature Christians and so on. Of course, as Christians, we need to be a light to the world and help anyone who's willing to accept the gospel but that's different than your inner circle or your social circle. For better or worse, more than likely, you end up getting attached to someone romantically that you spend time with in your social circle. Friends are often the gateway into romance. And even if you don't end up dating or being romantically attracted to one of your friends, oftentimes that social circle that your friends invite you into is where you end up meeting someone. When Moses was giving instructions about warfare, he said, and the officers shall speak further to the people and say, is there any man who is fearful and faint hearted? Let him go back to his house, lest he make the heart of his fellows melt like his own. You become like the people you spend time with. Therefore, choose your circle carefully. Number two, don't start a journey you know you can't finish right now. Perhaps the most common way people end up hurting their souls in a relationship is by getting into a relationship that they know is doomed from the start. As Jesus said, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who sees it begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. When you date without being able to marry, it's like preparing a meal you're not able to eat. You will be putting in effort, you will smell the pleasing aromas, you will see the delicious food, and you will want to eat it. If you date long enough, you will eventually give in to the temptation. In other words, you will start acting married even though you are not. The point here is that if you know you will never marry that person, there is no point to date them. And if you know that you're in a season of life where even if God did reveal that this is the right person for you, that something in your life would prevent you from getting married at this season and at this point, then there is no point for you to be dating right now. Dating in and of itself without headed towards marriage leads to sin. Number three, accept that you will not be the exception to the rule when it comes to messing around with unbelievers in a romantic relationship. Anytime I make a video like this where there's general principles that should help guide the Christian in their life, someone inevitably gives me a scenario with all types of minute details and exceptions to the rules saying, well, look, here's an example of where this principle doesn't apply. And to that, I say, yes, in most cases, there probably is an exception to the rule where one in a million, there's some unique situation that this principle doesn't apply to. But here's another principle that really will serve you well. Never assume that you are the exception to the rule. Because when we think that, normally we just end up getting burned by the rule. This is especially prevalent when it comes to Christians dating unbelievers or romantically pursuing an unbeliever. Whenever a Christian goes down this road, they say something to themselves like, I know this is unwise, but I think this is the exception. I think I'm different, this person's different, it's going to end differently. Perhaps this is why Paul said things like, do not be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolater, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Paul told us not to be deceived in instances 
instances like these because so many of us will want to deceive ourselves, imagining that we are the exception to the rule. Number four, choose character over charisma. Most people say, I really like that person. I wonder if they are a Christian. It's better to say, that person is a mature Christian. I wonder if we could like each other romantically. Proverbs 31, 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Romans 16, 18, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Charisma without character will lead you into a relationship that feels good now, but which results in an immense amount of pain later on. If you wanna follow what the Bible says about finding true love, then you might wanna watch this video as well. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.